How's it going, everybody? So as you know, I love my Lamborghini Huracan. I've driven it over the past 5,000 miles almost every single day. It's the best Lamborghini that has ever been made. It is an incredible mix of insane performance and it's daily drivable. But of course, no car is perfect. So here are some of the things I hate about my Lamborghini Huracan. First up, the glass engine cover. I love the way it looks. I would not have gotten the car without it, especially when it comes with the forged carbon inserts in the engine bay. However, if it rains, you lose all your visibility out the rear of the car. Because the window is at a very flat angle, raindrops build up on the surface and then you get a huge amount of fog on the glass and then the entire glass engine cover becomes a fogged over, completely non-transparent piece of glass that ruins all of your rear visibility. So if you are driving in the rain, you actually cannot see out the back of your car whatsoever. You can look out the side view mirrors, but obviously that's not ideal. Now, you could not in theory, remedy this by not getting the glass engine cover. The problem is that version has these slats on it that severely reduce visibility as well. So obviously, go with the glass engine cover, but driving the car in the rain, you have no visibility. Now, some people might say, why would you be driving your Lamborghini in the rain? That's a fair point, but I live in Michigan and the weather changes at an instant. There was this awesome car show. People brought out incredible cars, Ferrari F40, Bugatti, GT40s, and all of a sudden, boom, flash flood. And then you're stuck in the rain. It was unexpected and you can't see out the back. Also, this has excellent all wheel drive. So driving the car in the rain isn't a big deal whatsoever. Second up, the backup camera is horrendous. And I mean, seriously bad. The graphics look like they're out of a Game Boy Color. It's actually a joke. On an $18,000 Ford Focus, you're getting a much, much better backup camera. Also the line that's supposed to tell you, you know, when to stop the car, it doesn't give you a good indication of where that actually represents on the vehicle. It's not the back of the car. Actually, if you bring the line all the way up to a wall behind you, you still got a few feet left. So it's pretty annoying. This is my least favorite part about the backup camera. If you're backing out of a spot and you turn the steering wheel all the way to pull out and make a turn, the bottom spoke of the steering wheel, it's a little bit bulky. It's got the uh, selection for Strata, Sport, and Corsa completely blocks the backup camera. It goes exactly where the backup camera is located, the screen on the right side of the instrument cluster, and then you can't see anything. So as you're backing up, you're both looking around to see the backup camera, looking in your rear view mirror. Of course, you can do it the old fashioned way, but and nowadays, especially with limited visibility cars, like a supercar, Lamborghini Huracan, having a backup camera is really great. You can put the backup camera into full screen mode so that the steering wheel doesn't block it all the way. However, when it's in full screen, the horrible graphics are just enlarged and they become even more embarrassing. This part of the car is actually kind of dangerous. There's a cubby here underneath the center console area for extra storage space. Seems like a great place to put your phone, right? So you set your phone down there, but the problem is the lip, the little edge that's supposed to keep whatever you put in there in place is not tall enough. So if you slam on the brakes, you go around a turn quickly. I mean, it's a Huracan, you're gonna drive it fast. Your phone can shoot into the footwell right underneath your brake. That actually happens to me some stuff my wallet my phone went underneath the wheel well uh, underneath the footwell and I could barely stop the car it was terrifying also now there's a biker in the middle of the road not paying any attention thank you yes I am behind you you do not own the road I am faster goodbye Seriously though, that could have been remedied so easily, just make the little indent a little bit deeper and then stuff wouldn't fly out all over the place. I can't even use that. You've got small little pockets here on the side, but the storage space in this car is extremely limited. Which brings me to my next point. The Lamborghini Gallardo, a car I had before this, actually had slightly more storage space than the Huracan. In the front, we've now got 150 liters of storage space, which is basically nothing. In layman's terms, it is like, a big watermelon, or two backpacks with barely anything in it, or some microfiber towels, and two quick detailer sprays, and I don't know, a camera. 
that's about all you can put in it. So why is this a big deal? Well, there's things called rallies. I love participating in rallies. And if that is spanning over multiple days, you're gonna need to have space for clothing. And if you go with the passenger, which makes it way more fun, go with your girlfriend, or sometimes I've, I've gone with my girlfriend, or I've gone with Eddie, who are two different people, maybe, maybe not, there's no place to put all of your belongings. There's a tiny bit of storage space in the back here, but you have to pack in really small, thin bags because anything like a suitcase won't fit anywhere. If you want to pick someone up from the airport, they're basically going to have to put it on their lap. When I went on a rally, uh, I had to store a lot of my stuff in my buddy's GTR. So if you've got uh, somebody driving behind you in a Rolls Royce Phantom or something, then you're all set. But otherwise, storage space is abysmal. In comparison, the Ferrari 488 has 230 liters of storage space. That's over 50% more. Of course, it's rear wheel drive, so you don't have all the drivetrain components up in the front, but that means you can actually store real things. Would I take a 488 over this because it has more luggage space? Absolutely not but something to consider, especially if your girlfriend packs a lot of clothes. Lastly, and this is one of the most minor issues, but it's something people talk about a lot on the Huracan forum. When you start up the car, it automatically starts in automatic mode and Strata. Strata is the comfort mode, so to speak. It's got very limited throttle response. Everything is really smooth. It's very boring and I never drive the car in that setting. It also has the screen in the split screen view. So you've got a small little tachometer on the left and then on the right, you've got your music or navigation or something like that. Well, I like to drive in Sport or Corsa. I'm mostly in Corsa, I'd say 90% of the time. And then I like to be in the full tachometer mode. I think most people driving a Huracan would do that as well. This is a driver's car. You don't really need half your instrument cluster taken up by Chris Brown's latest song information here. So to do that, you have to press and hold this button on the steering wheel, not once, but twice, and then it pops up. It's a little bit annoying to have to activate that every time. I know that's the biggest first world problem ever, having to waste about five seconds of your life to change the screen on your Huracan, but it's pretty annoying if you could store the setting and when you turn the car back on, it came with that, that would be awesome. So there you have it. There's some of the things that I hate about the Lamborghini Huracan. I still love this car more than anything. It is so incredible to drive. This is the first Lamborghini that actually feels like a dream to drive around corners, not just in a straight line and to look at it. I know people are gonna comment, it's a race car, why do you need all that? It's a Lamborghini, none of that matters. You don't know anything about cars. I'm just giving you some downsides of the car that I've discovered through the 5,000 miles of owning it. Just to let you know that a car like this, even though it is a work of art, there are still issues. No car is perfect. Every car has some flaws. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse our channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video.